one. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Definitely pop into the comments. Let me know. I had a little weird pause there. I've been working the computer like crazy today. So I'm going to go ahead and pop on to the phone real quick just to make sure we are live, which we're good. Looking great. How is your day? How are you doing? What are you doing? Even if you're watching the replay, I want you to pop into the comments right there, right there, yep, and drop a comment, even if you're watching the replay. I want you to say hi, I want you to connect not only with me, but everyone else here. Yes, just like this, because look, once you put a comment, if you're live, um, I can put it on the screen for you. So, how is everybody? I am so pumped, I know I asked that a couple times already, but I am just, I'm so pumped. Why? Well. Let me tell you first about the show, then I'll tell you why, and then we'll get into the whole show, which we're going to talk about three things that you uh, need to know about web design. So first, what's the show about? The show is all about these conversations that are worth having. That's around business, tech, and the user experience. And it's those conversations that we usually just have with friends or uh, other experts uh, in the field, other mentors, uh, coaches, all of that that we have in the fields, but um, or even at a coffee shop. But now we go live. So that's what this is about. Um, I bring on guests uh, throughout the week. Uh, if you would like to be a guest, you can head over later to checkwithed.com, click on the Facebook Live tab, and it will have information about the show. It will give you actually now tools all the tools that I use, I have those listed there um, to get kind of fancy like this. Um, my new training that I just put up there about this because we had that today, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then also, uh, most importantly, it has a form for you to fill out if you'd like to be a guest. Why would you want to be a guest? Because it allows you to hang out with me, number one. But number two, it allows you to get out in front of people. It allows you to get out in front of my audience, and then I also can see your audience, and then we can work together as a team, because teamwork equals success, right? And we want to be able to um, get more comfortable with going live and being able to have conversations live publicly here on Facebook and wherever they're watching the replay, because I post this on YouTube and it's over on my blog. Um, it's just a great way to engage and to share what you know and to just build your online relationships. That's what this show's about. That's why I always encourage you to, boom, get in the comments. Even if you're watching the replay, you're going to hear that throughout the show. Um, jump in there and do that. I'm going to go ahead and pop this comment on the screen. Um, going over that amazing training. Yes, it was great, wasn't it? Uh, thank you so much for coming, too. So the training that we're talking about, that's you'll find on the Facebook Live page um, over at checkwithed.com. That was a live paid training that was off of Facebook. Um, we had a training earlier today, which I'm still pumped from and so excited. Uh, we covered how to get fancy and professional with our um, graphics here. We covered the Facebook Creator app, how you can start using that if you choose to. Uh, we talked about how to just get going with going live and the basics of what you need and what, what you should be doing uh, before you get all crazy like this, um, and then how you can get crazy like this. So we jammed packed all of that content into literally 59 minutes. That's including the uh, intro that I had, you know, just talking about what we're going to cover and everything. We did good. So if you guys showed up, you guys are awesome. Uh, even if you didn't show up, that's okay. Uh, you can you can uh, check out the replay that's in the training uh, over on checkwithed.com. Just click the Facebook Live show and you'll see training now listed there. Um, Whitney, it's okay if you missed it. Um, if you did sign up for the live training like Whitney did, don't worry. I'm going to be sending out the replay to you guys here after, probably after the show. Um, I just finished uploading everything and making that page all nice because I have a replay and a resource page, so it's really cool, um, and I'm really excited for you guys. So, anyway, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. I can't help it. Uh, and so thank you all for, for who 
uh, came to the training, who um, are thinking about going to the training, uh, who are showing up right now, even if you're watching the replay, everyone counts, and it makes a world of a difference to see you guys here and to see you in the comments connecting not only with me, but each other, because it only takes one comment to change the game for you. That's how you're going to get discovered. That's how you get discovered when you go live. So keep that in mind, and if you watch replays, even on other people's shows, make sure you hop into the comments. Comment, comment, comment. That's the biggest advice I can give you for anybody who's trying to build their business online and who wants to stand out. Provide value, show up, deliver, and engage. That's the big ones. So, whew, that was a lot, right? Now, for the show. What we're going to do is cover some random news. We like to uh, go over a couple random things up front, which I have a couple of them, although I don't know if it's as random as yesterday's. If you missed yesterday's episode, uh, definitely check it out. It's over on checkwithed.com. Just click on the Facebook Live show, and you'll be able to see previous episodes. Uh, we talked a lot about... Actually, I really don't know what we talked about yesterday. It was good, though. I know that. Today's been a lot going on, so I couldn't tell you what we talked about yesterday, but it was good. It will probably come back to me later. Um, but uh, one of the random news things, which obviously stuck with me, is uh, Taco Bell. They someone uh, the Taco Bell in Alabama, I guess, the other night burned down, and it was a very sad story. And people actually mourned and had candlelight visuals and everything. So that was yesterday's random news, not today's. Today's is a little different, a little bit. Better, I guess you could say. I don't know. Um, so the first one, oh yes, Whitney, the snow bike. We also had the snow bike in yesterday's random news, which, okay, FYI, here's the thing. When you start getting fan fancy, I always say fancy, but I feel like professional maybe is a better word. Um, when you start getting crazy with your Facebook lives here, remember, and I'm telling you this because this is what kind of happened yesterday. Remember when you start showing your screen, like, like you'll see here in a few minutes, if you're playing other content, make sure that you mute it, because if it has music, it will flag either Facebook, or in my case yesterday, it flagged on YouTube, which was not technically a bad, bad thing, because the way they had it set up was they can just make the copyright claim to the song that was in that snow bike video, um, which I was afraid of. Um, they can, somehow they tagged it right away, and they knew, and then it told me that they would just monetize that section of the video with ads um, if I kept that music on or I could remove it. So food for thought, fun facts, whatever you want. There's a piece of knowledge to take with you. If you learn nothing else from today's episode is make sure that you don't play music uh, because it's, it's, it's dicey. You'll notice that in my intro video, my outro video, I do have music, but that is allowed because I got it from a source that actually allows that, and I actually have the source on the um, the intro slide there, so that way you can see that it's clearly there. So that's been fine. Anyway, that's that was that. So when your phone dies, well, let me ask. Let me back up. Let me back up. How many of you, even if you're watching the replay, you can jump in the comments have have had your phone die. Like, we're talking like below 10% to 0%. Go ahead. You can raise your hand. You can give me some love. Show me some emojis. Um, all of that good stuff. Now, what if when you got down to 5%, you could start using an app? But not for battery, though. It only will work when your phone gets to 5% to have a conversation, so a text message, with somebody else who has 5%. Weird, right? Well, apparently there is a new app called Die With Me, and it's a 5% app, meaning that when your phone battery gets to 5%, you can then start using the app to communicate with people. I, I, I don't know. You tell me if that's of interest to you. If it is, cool. But I will tell you, when my phone is below 20%, especially below 10%, I am trying not to use that thing until I get to a plug. More, more like 10, 10 or lower, because I have a, I have a uh, 7 plus... So the battery is really good. But 
I'm telling you, 5% or less, then you can start talking to people. I don't want to talk to you if my battery's at 5% unless it's an emergency. I'm trying to get to a plug. So, you know, that app is not going to work for me. Um, so anyway, that was one random news and a uh, fun one. And then here's where I'm going to show you my screen, but I'm not going to play the actual music because this is an interesting one. Now, this device that I'm going to show you is probably not for a lot of us, but maybe, um, and it's one that it's going in the right direction. It's using the technology and thinking outside the box, right? Helping those who, well, you know, let me just, let me just go ahead and show you. Let me go ahead and flip my screen here. Give me just a second. And, oops, I gotta be on the right, see, I gotta be on the right one and then do that. Hey, hey, glad you can make it. So here is a new device that they're working on called Hip Air. And let's just take a quick look at what it does. I have it muted, so we're good. But it's an airbag for your hips. And it detects when you're going to fall because it has sensors in there to help know exactly when you're going to fall. And then it deploys like an airbag to help you so that you don't fracture your hip or worse, right? So, of course, it may not be for everyone, but look at the style. Look at, it's almost like a fanny pack, right? And then on top of that, they, they've taken the technology and put it into play so that you can help somebody that maybe isn't right there with you all the time. Um, it's something different, and hopefully this is still catching on. There we go. My computer's a little slow because we've been using a lot of um, tech today. Um, but it's something that's different, right? And it's taking that outside the box, right? Because, I mean, who, who thinks about that? Who's like, you know... I really am afraid of breaking my hip or fracturing it. And how about if I have an airbag? Like somebody thought of that, which is brilliant, I think. Um, yeah, really cool, right? Uh, it's something different. So don't think that your ideas that come to mind are crazy or, I mean, they might be, but it's crazy good. Um, but keep in mind that there's a product for everyone. Uh, clearly, we saw the 5% app. I mean, let's... Again, it's not me, but maybe it's you, you know, um, when it comes to this hip air, how cool is that? Like to be able to actually have sensors so that if I start to fall, it knows and it pops out airbags without being too, um, too, uh, intrusive as I wear it throughout the day. Right. So there's something cool, uh, for everyone there. Now, if you missed yesterday's show, I'm going to show you what I did with a clip from yesterday's show. So here's the other thing. We talk about this a lot, right? And if you were in today's training, we did talk about this too. Repurposing. You want to take the content you're already creating. Example, my Facebook Live show here. And pull content from that. Because we go live for an hour, five days a week. That's a lot of content. I can use bits and pieces of that elsewhere. Hey, hey, um, there is a product for everyone. It is so true. There we go. I'm going to put that on the screen there. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and you guys keep commenting. If you're, even if you're in the replay later watching this, uh, continue to comment with people. Check in with each other. Uh, do the little emotions. Know that if you go past the like, it actually helps the post. Uh, that goes for your post as well. So make sure that you, um, you know, go past the like when you're doing that on anybody's feed, not just mine. But let me go ahead and switch over to the screen again, because I want to show you that yesterday we had Tammy, one of our viewers, um, who, by the way, you guys, I've, I've hit a big milestone. Can I share that with you for a second? We have hit a huge milestone, not just me, we. We have hit a huge milestone. We were able to make dinner time TV. That's right. Tammy informed me yesterday in the comments that now it's supper time for Ed Talk TV. Every time I come on, 
they're gathering together, having supper, and engaging with us here. So we made it. We're there. We're there. Uh, speaking of your webinar, are you going to offer that on demand? Yes. So the um, the training will be on demand. It's actually, I'll drop the link in the uh, comments as well, uh, because there is available for the replay will be available for purchase. I just finished uploading that and there'll be a resource page attached to it with a bunch of information as well. So um, I will have that in the comments. Don't let me forget before the end of the show. So yesterday I took a piece of content from the video from this episode and we were able to, um, thanks Whitney, we were able to um, have a really good clip from uh, Tammy who had pop popped in the comments had it on screen, talked about, you know, mic drop, boom. Well, what did I do with that? Let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and flip my screen and let you guys see for yourself. Give it a second. It's kind of delayed. Boom. Mic drop. That's, that's how we do it right there. Sorry for all these other garbage ones, but um, there you go. So... That's how cool it is when you start going live and working on these um, these these videos. When you start going from just dropping a comment to um, there we go, catching up. Hopefully the audio is good. Uh, so that's what you can do with these videos. Whether you go live for two minutes, five minutes, thirty minutes, an hour, whatever works for you you can actually go and take a small snippet. That was like a couple seconds, literally a couple seconds, that now I turned into a GIF image that actually Mari Smith, if any of you guys follow her, which is awesome, she has awesome content all about Facebook. Um, she got a good kick out of that yesterday because we were in, in the comments on one of her posts and I was like, you know, I was gonna share this but I didn't want to promote because it has all my branding. She's like, no, go ahead. And so I sent it to her, and she just got a huge kick out of it. So shout out to Mari. Thank you so much for uh, letting me share that with you, and that was a fun comment. See, guys, that's why I say the magic happens in the comments, because it's so much fun. Uh, yeah, making the gif, giffy. Yep. It's so much fun. Um, so that's why I want you guys to start doing that. Now, let's talk about um, web design. First off, how many of you have a website. Let me know in the comments, even if you're watching the replay. While you do that, I'm going to go ahead and drop in the link um, for tools. That's number one. And then I'm going to drop in another link. The reason I'm dropping in my tools link is because we're going to talk about some of these tools here. So that way you can easily find them later. So do you have a website? And um, yes or no. And then um, if not, that's okay. No one's going to get in trouble. Perfect. We have some that say I do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this other link for you guys for um, the training if anybody wants that for later. Um, so we have that. And then we have another one. Perfect. Excellent. And so you have your website. Now, can you tell me what's one thing, one thing that you think might be one of the top three things you need in order to have a website. This could be anything that comes to mind. Um, perfect, yes, I do, I do, awesome. So even if you're watching the replay, you can still jump into the comments because we, we comment live even afterwards. That's called the after party, actually, the comments when you're watching the replay. Um, so let me know, do you have an idea of one of three of the top things you need in order to have a website? doesn't matter what kind of website you have, just what are the one, one thing, there's three big ones that you need, well, that you could need, uh, depending on where you have it, but what's at least one, and I'm pretty sure you guys could probably all guess this, um, but I'm going to give you a second to do that while I pop this into the comments for you. Excellent, that's, that's a good one, yeah, I'm going to put them on screen as you guys come up with them. WordPress or a website builder, yeah, let me make that a little bit there. Format, yep. I'm gonna put that on the screen. What else we got? And I know replay viewers, you won't be able to, I won't be able to add you onto the screen, but that's okay. What else do we have, you guys? I'm gonna go um, here, Facebook. Tr 
Awesome. Yep. I'm going to go and pop this into here. And I'll pin that for you guys. Okay, there. Um, perfect. So these are the ones that I'm going to go with here. Now, here is content. Yes, content's a big one. We're going to pop that in there. Content is big because why have a website if you don't have any content, right? Um, yes, <laughs> pin it. Thanks. You are so welcome. I just pinned it for you. Also, anybody else, if you're trying to find it, it's the pin post. Or if you're just on checkwithed.com, you can click on Facebook Live Show. It's also on that one where you have the guest form. So FYI, it's there. Payment processor, Whitney. Nice. Because we talked about, that's what we were talking about yesterday. See, I knew I would remember. We were talking about getting paid online and how to make it efficient for both you and your potential customers. Good call, Whitney. I appreciate it. Hey, hey. Nope. You are good. You are good. We're just jumping in. So you got, well, you missed some of the, the random news, but you can always catch that on the replay. Uh, so when it comes to a website, there are three main things that you want to pay attention to. Now, the first one is the big one. Like that, that's just like big, big. Then it kind of goes iffy on the next one. So the first thing that you need for a website and those of you who have one, you already have this, you know you do, um, it's going to be your domain name. A domain name is your online address. I say home address um, because that is where people are going to uh, find you. Now, I'm going to switch my screen again, and I'm going to show you the one that I use, um, which you can find on the tools page. I dropped that link in there. But... I use name.com, you can use Google, uh, GoDaddy, you can use uh, Namecheap, I, there's so many out there that you can use. I use this one simply uh, for the fact that it's easy to use, it's super clean and user friendly, and I just, I really like it. So anytime you come up with an idea for a website, you want to make sure that you start with what's your domain name, and then I suggest writing them down, like not just one, but like brainstorming, letting it sit for a minute, you know, like let it marinate overnight, maybe, uh, maybe two days, um, just to really think about it. Because what happens is you can buy a domain name, they're super cheap, uh, but then you start buying a ton and then you have, you know, next thing you know, you've spent hundreds of dollars on a domain, on domain names and you have never built a website. So keep that in mind. Um, I think there's... Uh, let's go, Oops. let's just type in, we'll just go here. So you type in whatever you want, anything you come up with, you can type in. I do suggest first narrowing down your, um, your top picks. Hey, Tammy. Um, yep. Always, always buying domains. I hear you. Um, so you want to go ahead and first brainstorm your domain names pick, you know, your top choice and then maybe the second runner up, third runner up before typing it in to a search box like this on whatever domain register you're going to be buying from. So in this case, I'm, I'm not interested in buying this, but I'm just going to see if it's there. The reason I say to, um, to know your name that you want to get first before actually going to these domain registers is because there, I don't have a confirmation on this, but there is always um, the rumor that once you start typing things into these searches, they can pick up on it. And if you don't buy the domain name, they could automatically have one of their bots buy it and then try to sell it to you later. There, there's all kinds of different things going on. Point is, if you're not ready, don't type it in. Um, and then when you are, go ahead and type it in and then search. And then what will happen is, Whoever you're searching with, this is name.com, you go with um, GoDaddy, whoever you prefer, they'll search all over the world for you, all over the internet world, and then they'll come up with search results based off of what you typed in there, which, look at that, look at that, some of these domain names, I swear, I just want to buy them because they're just so darn good, um, so edisthebest.com, 
perfect domain name. You can see it's even on sale, which we like. Oh, that's another reason why I use name.com, by the way. Um, I am an affiliate for them, which means uh, you get $5 towards your purchase if you get a, um, a domain name, and then I have uh, I get a $5 credit. So that's on the tools page. I did put that in the comments. You can always find it if you just go to checkwithed.com. It's on there as well. Um, it's in the footer right now, I think, too, on the website in case you're looking for it. Anyway, um, that's another reason why I love name.com because they always have good sales. So you can see it's on sale, then you would add it to your cart if you like it. Now look down here. You always want to get the .com, still, that's still the preferred choice. Um, of course, you've probably seen all of these other ones, maybe some new ones like .life, .pro, .in, .live. There's all these different crazy ones. Your first choice should always be a .com because that's what people are used to, that's what people are going to um, type in, and technically that's still where the money's at. Um, it's just preferred. But you can see that you get all of these different options. So let's say your domain name is taken, or it's really, really expensive. Like I've had some really great ones that are like hundreds of thousands of dollars, which obviously is not happening on my budget. Um, so when you go here and do your search, you can also look at the suggestions here and see if anything comes up in terms of ideas for another one. You know, I mean, maybe maybe I'm running a pizza joint, and I like Ed is the best, or Ed has the best pizza dot com, or Ed's pizza dot com. You know, like it's stuff like that where you can really go through and kind of think outside the box when you do these searches. But I always suggest having a good list, uh, a brainstorming list. Give yourself a day or two to just brainstorm, a few minutes brainstorming. Pause, let it sit to the side, go back to it, let it sit overnight, go back to it. Because you can have 20, 30 different domain names on your list, and you're excited about them in the moment, but then when you let it marinate overnight, and you come back to it, you start narrowing down that 20 to probably maybe 10 or even 5, and then you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't that great of an idea, it was fun, but that's not something I want to build my business with, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, some of these are really fun. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest, even if you already have a domain name, is checking out their blog. Let's see, where is it? It's somewhere down here. Oh, right there. Um, so check out their blog too, because these are places, just like anybody's blog, right? Or anybody's Facebook Live, hint, hint. Or anybody's um, uh, podcasts. Like, this is where you can learn for free what's going on. Like, look at this. Six new domains for the transportation industry. That's interesting. Not only to me, because I just, I'm interested in domain names, but it's interesting to somebody who is going to have transportation as part of their um, business, right? And so let's just click on that because I am curious. But the point is, is that you want to utilize the free options you have because this is where you do the work, right? It, it may be free, but it's you putting in the time, money, and energy to do this. And I say money because it, if you work on a 9 to 5, or if you're supposed to be doing something else, that, that money, you're not making that money because you're trying to learn it on your own. Hence why we hire professionals to do certain things for us, so that way we don't have to go through all the work. But... When you're trying to do it on your own, you want to utilize spaces like the blog, the podcast, the Facebook Lives, all of that stuff, um, because it's all free audio, or free audio, it's all free content that's being made for you. Um, it's like those freebies that you would get for signing up for an email list, right? So .auto, .bike, .cab, .car, okay, so they're just the different ones, but look at how they give you a little bit of the why that's what we're talking about. Remember, if you've been following us, uh, and if you're if you haven't, but you're curious about the uh, Facebook pages and algorithm changes and all that, we covered that uh, last week in one of our episodes. We'll talk about it, of course, again, but we covered that in one of our episodes, and we talked about you know going past just dropping your link 
So in this case, don't just say dot auto, say what it's good for and why. Um, excuse me, that is where it gets interesting. That's where you guys will start to really get seen. That's where you're going to be seen. That's why I tell you in the comments to really make sure that you jump in there. Even if you're watching the replay, you want to make sure you jump into anybody's comments because that's where you're going to get discovered. And then if you go live, that's where you're going to get discovered, right? It just takes one person. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, it could because anything can happen once you put yourself out there, but it's not necessarily going to happen overnight. You have to keep showing up. You have to keep delivering. You have to keep engaging. And so that was a great example in that blog post of not just dropping the link, but explaining the link, which is what I want you to do on those Facebook group promo days, um, anywhere that you're allowed to promote your page, your website, all of that stuff. So keep that in mind. So w number one is a domain name. Now, number two is going to be different for everyone. If you have a WordPress.com, a Wix, or a um, Squarespace, those are like the three main popular ones that will fit into this bracket that I'm about to say. Um, if you have one of those uh, sites, they are kind of like a... a a rented apartment, right? You you don't have to worry necessarily about the property, the taking care of the property and all that stuff. It's all bundled into the space that you pay for. Um, in this case, it's a it's a high end property, okay? Um, but if you are using like I have WordPress.org, I know it's super confusing. You have WordPress.com, WordPress.org. Basically, WordPress.com is rented space. WordPress.org, think of it as the foundation for your home. Like, literally, it's like dirt. And then you can build your home however you want. Or if you're not building it, you have someone like me build it, right? So you have rented space that's already built for you. You get to kind of just uh, apply what you want to the walls with some kind of restrictions. And then you have the WordPress.org, which is your brand new empty vacant lot that you can build whatever you want. You can paint the walls, whatever you want. It's literally up for grabs. That's how I separate them. Hopefully that's helpful for you. If you're watching the replay, let me know as well. Um, so if you have WordPress.org like I do, you need what's called a web host. That's basically an online storage unit. Think of it as that. I like to relate it to real life stuff. So over here on WordPress.com, that's all built into its its pricing and its restrictions. But over here on WordPress.org, you have an option to do whatever you want and get a web host. So for that, I'm going to switch over to my other one here. Um, you'd think I have the key key points down here on terms of my my screen changes, but you know it's been a long day. So <laughs> if you're getting web hosting. I, there's plenty of people out there that you can uh, that will recommend different ones. I can only recommend SiteGround, not because I'm just an affiliate for them, but because above all else, they are the best customer service support service anyone can have. Trust me, because I have used them for so many years now, and I've been on the other end with other companies not only for myself, but for clients. And I can tell you there is a huge difference. So shout out to SiteGround. I love you guys if you're watching this. Um, but I want to make sure that uh, you guys are aware of how to go about this. So if you're on somebody's web hosting, so I'm going to just use SiteGround, you want what's called shared hosting. So you click on that, and then you go from there to see what your options are. Now, of course, since I am an affiliate, I'll just tell you guys, if you end up wanting to go with SiteGround, please let me know or use my tools page because I do have an option there uh, for them. But for most starting out, you will only need the startup. You do not need to go any bigger over here. The big difference is going to be if you're having multiple websites and if you have a ton of content, like a ton, um, Otherwise, start with something small. Now, if you go with some other uh, company, that's fine too. 
But look at their plans and just go with the basics. That's why I'm showing you this to, um, let me have my screen catch up there. The reason I'm showing you this is I want you to be educated on it. I want you to kind of see what steps are for going about it, whether it's for your new website, your current website, or your next website, it doesn't matter. Um, that's kind of new, but whatever. Um, so when it comes to web hosting, you want to just make sure that it's that the basic plan, if you're just just starting out, if you don't have a ton of stuff, you know, I currently have uh, the high-end package only because I have checkwithed.com, I have stupideasy.com, and I have a couple other ones, and I, I have a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of content, especially on stupideasy.com, because that's where other people's content is uploaded to it, right? That's where other courses are being uploaded, so I can't possibly hold all that information on one of those smaller plans. So that's what you want to start to think about and um, just be aware of. And you can always change plans, no matter who the company is, unless you're locked into a contract, which I haven't heard of that recently, but maybe um, you you can still stick with the company, but change your plans depending on how um, how much you increase. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, so domain name and possibly a web host are the two out of the three that I wanted to cover. Um, for those who are getting a website, have a website, or might be making a new one. Um, the third one, as we kind of mentioned, is content. Um, and then I'm going to kind of add a bonus one there, but is, is your content. So what does that mean? That means that you want to have a plan. You want to think about what are you going to put on this site? You got the domain name, you got the web host or one of the other platforms, right? Now it's what are you going to put on there? Because even if you build the website or you hire someone else to build the website, you're still going to have to have content because it's kind of hard to build a website if you don't have any content. I mean, it can be done, but it's really difficult. And um, you want to make sure that you have some kind of comment. Uh, comment. Yes, I want you to comment, but some kind of content. Um, even if it's just a couple lines uh, of paragraphs, you know, saying what you do, uh, what you want to offer, what services you offer, because it's going to grow, right? When you guys are done here, if you haven't seen it, um, you, I want you to check out checkwithed.com just for an example. Um, even if you don't go to any of the other links that we've talked about, doesn't matter. Just go to checkwithed.com afterwards and just take a quick peek at the way it's laid out. What you see now is nothing like what my website was six months ago, a year ago, three years ago. It has grown into this monster website. But yours doesn't have to start that way. If you are just starting or you only have a little bit of content, it's okay. You can have just a one page on your website if that's all you need because you just want an online presence. That's okay. I have some clients that literally they just need their home page because they don't have a whole lot to show because they have clients. They they have their business is not necessarily an online business, but they need an online presence because they know people are going to look for them. They know that they want to be found with Google. So having that online presence even if it's just a little bit on the home page is important. So Think about that and like Whitney has, yes, domain, web host, and content. Um, again, if you guys are using WordPress.com, Wix, Squarespace, and I'm sure there's probably others, you don't need the web hosting because that's built into your um, plan. You'll just have different restrictions on, I say restrictions because it's kind of like, you know, being a HOA or being at uh, a rented apartment or maybe a hotel room or something. There's only so much you can do uh, with that versus WordPress.org. Um, so, that doesn't mean go change all your websites. If, if you're like, oh, I, I had told me to have a dot, a dot org, uh, wordpress.org. What am I going to do? Do I need to redo it? No, like maybe it depends. You know, ask yourself, what's your intent? Ask yourself if what you have is okay. Remember, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It just has to be an online presence that you can send people to. I'm just sharing all this information with you so that you're more informed and well aware of what's going on. 
Um, now, the bonus part that I want to tie on there, because this happens a lot if you have other people build your site, and this is not to scare you whatsoever. This is just to inform you, because it happens, and it's not just for building websites. It's if you have a VA, if you have whoever working with you that is not you, right? Are you taking notes? I want to make sure that you're taking notes, even if you're watching the replay viewer, because uh, even if you're watching the replay viewer, even if you're watching the replay, I want you to take notes, especially on this one, because this is key. Can we lean in for a second? All right. Um, so definitely take notes on this. Give me a second here. Okay. Everything you sign up for, domain name, web host, uh, WordPress, doesn't matter if it's org.com, Squarespace, whatever, uh, Facebook, everything you sign up for, you get a login. Username, password. That username and password is probably going to be shared, given this example for websites, with a designer, which is okay, but I want you to make sure that it's you sharing it with them versus them sharing it with you. Follow? Let me explain. I want you to make sure that anytime you create a website, it doesn't matter if you're creating it or if you're hiring, having someone, if you're hiring someone else to do it for you, the most important part is that you put the username in your name, meaning, I want you to buy the domain name. I want you to set up the account with WordPress.com, Wix, or in um, this case, WordPress.org, meaning hosting. I want you to own those accounts, and I want you then to share that info with me. Here's the real example, okay? I hope this is, let me know in the comments if this is making sense. But this is what I want you guys to do. If we're working together, Let's say you hire me to do your website. I specifically have on my, my forms and my contract that you are responsible for the domain name and the web host, if there is one, which for me, it, I only work with WordPress.org, so it, you have to have a web host. Um, <laughs> Tammy says, preach, brother. I love it, Tammy. Thank you so much. Um, so this is important, you guys. It, it's so important. I want you to buy your own domain name. Even if you don't know how, you still need to buy it. I just showed you how. You can share this with your friends, your family members, everyone. Tell them to watch, you know, whatever uh, timestamp we did here on the video, but share with them. This is important. Even if you're not tech savvy. Anytime you're engaging in web design services, I want you, the owner, to buy your own domain name, and I want you, the owner, to set up the account, whether that's with a hosting company or with WordPress.com or whatever. It needs to be in your name. It needs to be in your account. And then you can share that info with the designer. Because, can anybody guess, by the way? Obviously, I'm passionate about this, so I'm going to I'm gonna breathe for a second. Um, but can anybody guess? Look, I got the pen out, too. Can anybody guess why? It's important that you buy the domain name and that you set up the account, whether that's just with a WordPress.com, Squarespace, Wix, or with your web host. Why is that important? I'm going to tell you why. Because this happens way too often, and it's not good, is that, um, yeah, so Tammy, okay, I do set up account for clients with their credit card info and their emails. Yes. So here's the thing, you guys. That's a great point, Tammy. Thank you. Even if you're afraid to do this, then you get the professional that you're hiring and you have them walk you through it. You. You. Through it. Don't have them do it. Well, they can do it for you in terms of like Tammy was saying, you know, like she's with... The, with you as sending up the account. But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to say, hey, Ed, you go ahead. You set everything up under your name, under your account, under your credit card, and, and then just send me the login, you know, and send me a bill. No. Uh-uh. 
not going to happen. Um, exactly. Yep. That that's okay, Whitney. Well, we got it. Um, so like Whitney said, the reason why it's so important that you have things in your name is because at the end of the day, you need to have the keys to the kingdom. You need to have those keys. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. I know, right? Tammy knows what's up. We're both over here like, no, no, you, you got to set it up. You got to set it up. We will help you. We will help you, but you got to set it up. All you got to do is ask, right? Um, so you have to have the keys to the kingdom. And this is pretty much, I mean, with anything that you create, right? Um, especially if you're running your own business, you don't want your, uh, your assistant or your VA or, you know, the copy guy, uh, or gal to go and create an account for you under their name, right? Like that would be weird. And how long are they really going to be at the company for? And what happens when they go? Like now you have no way to access your account, right? And then you have to go through all these random things. So it's so important, especially with web design. And I bring that up because unfortunately that, that happened with someone recently. Um, and I was helping them through all of that where thankfully we were able to get the domain name moved to their account and all of that straightened out. Um, but it, it was stressful for them, uh, big time. And there was a chance that they could never get that domain to them if they couldn't get in contact with the designer that originally created it. So it's a huge wake up call that I want to make sure everyone's aware of. And I want you to share it with your friends, even if it's just conversation, if you're not sharing this broadcast, but you're just talking to them, let them know they need to keep the keys to the kingdom. They need to have that information in their name under their billing information, because if worst case scenario, something happens to that person, the designer that they hired, that person goes out of business, whatever they decide to like, just peace out you still have access to your account, right? That's the important part. That's why I don't set that up under my info. Like everything I create for you is under your stuff. And then even my updates are made, they go through me in terms of like the, the, um, the systems that I use. They'll go through me, but I have a code based into your uh, website so that when I leave the project, that stuff's all there. And it will still let you run your own updates through the program that I have. So even if something happens to me, I have lifetime access to that program. So it doesn't matter. You're still good. You can mourn me wherever I went, you know, um, and keep it moving and still have your website up. So that's the important part. And I think a lot more designers are doing things like that. But I want you to just make sure to keep that information. Do that yourself. Get help if you need it. And then... The next question you're probably asking yourself is like, well, great, Ed, there's another login information that I got to figure out what piece of post-it to put it on and where to find it next, right? Nope. I got you covered. It's also on the tools page. That tools page is looking pretty handy about now, isn't it? So on that tools page over on checkwithed.com, you will actually see it on the home page and in the footer. I might be moving it to the actual main menu here soon uh, as well. But over there, you'll see another link to one. I almost said WordPress. <laughs> one password, just the number one password. That is an awesome app that will help you. There's other ones, LastPass, um, Dashlane. There's all these other ones. I can only speak for what I've used for over six plus years now, and I can't say enough about them. They're just awesome. It's You can get the app for free on your phone. You can pay to have it on your computer and synced up if you wanted to. Otherwise, chances are you take your phone everywhere, so get it on the phone for free. Every time you get a login, you pop it in, doo -doo 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 -doo, and you save it. It's that easy. Then the next time you go for a login and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't, I don't know where it's at. I have all these papers. I don't know where it's at. Well, you got it right here. It's in your phone. And then you'll be like, hashtag check with Ed. Boom. That was for you, Tammy. Uh, so anyway, uh, lots and lots of good stuff. I hope that was helpful for you guys uh, in terms of websites and being able to do that. Because everything needs a pa password. Exactly, Whitney. Um, yep. 
Gold there, yes. One password. I'm telling you guys, you guys, if nothing else from this broadcast, nothing else, get one password. You can always thank me later. I swear it's the best. And again, just like we talked about, having the keys to the kingdom, you literally have one master key or a finger, whatever you want to use, depending on your device. And then you go from there and that opens the vault to everything, everything. And then you're probably thinking, well, Ed, what about the security? What if I lose my phone? It has built-in security. It's the same security your bank account has. So you're good. And if you lose your phone, well, they can't access your app, which is also another point. Let's bring up that for security purposes. Also a good point. If you have a phone, which chances are you do because you're probably watching me on it, um, I want you to make sure you have a passcode on it. What's a passcode? A passcode is, let me go ahead and bring mine up here. A passcode is that. You can see my light over on the side. It is, and if you have a new device like an iPhone or whatever, you'll have the fingerprint detection. That's cool too, but you have a passcode backup. Have a passcode, even if you have an older phone, pop that thing on there because that's another form of security because chances are you're on your phone more than you think and you have more information on there than you think. And if you don't have a passcode on there and something happens to your phone, well, Bye-bye. They got access to your email, which you probably just open up every time in the app. They have access to your calendar. They have access to your contacts, which you probably have a fake contact in there with some of your login information because you didn't have one password, because you just thought it would be easier there. All kinds of things, right? I know. It's okay. Don't worry. We've all been there. We probably all still have a contact in there. Um, Aunt Betty is probably still in there with a bunch of different names, right? So anyway, the point is do yourself a favor and help protect yourself. One password is what you need. That's where you're going to put all of your passwords. You can put secure notes in there, all that stuff. Put a passcode on your device, whether it's your iPhone, your iPad, your tablet, whatever you want, your computer. Okay. We have a few minutes. So let me, let me break this down for you too. Um, how many of you in the comments right now, live, in the comments on the replay, how many of you have gone to a coffee shop or even the airport and seen people work on their computer, leave the device, it's probably not as much in the airport unless they have somebody with them, we'll stick to coffee shop, leave their device on the table while they go to the bathroom? How many? Am I the only one that sees that? People will get up, leave their computer, most of the time open, on the table as they walk to the bathroom. What? Are you kidding me? Like, why would you even think that that's okay? I still remember, I, I, I see this everywhere, by the way. I see this in my town, I see this in the city, I see this everywhere. I will not forget, though, the Starbucks in um, New York. I could not believe it. It's it's packed. I mean, I wouldn't even do it at my local Starbucks, even if it's like in the evening, where there's only a few people there, let alone having all these people there. They leave their computers open, you guys. Yeah, they leave them open. Even if it's closed, I don't care. It's not okay. You pick everything up, and you take it with you, or you hold it. You hold the bathroom until you got to get everything packed up and you need to go, right? Like, don't leave your stuff unattended. It's expensive. It's got all your information on it. Even if you think that you don't use it a whole lot, it still has your information on it. Just don't leave it, please. So, you know, we kind of, we kind of took a little detour, but not too bad. We stuck with security and keeping the king, uh, keys to the kingdom, whether you have a website or you just need, Advice on keeping things protected. That's that. And we'll just stick to technology, okay? Um, so when it comes to your website, domain name, web host, or one of the other guys, and then content. Bonus, one password so that you save your logins. 
The big thing you want to um, have is um, you did miss the class. The class was earlier today, side note, um, but I did put the link. Uh, if anybody wants to catch the replay, the link is above uh, in the pin post. Um, so the bonus was one password so that you keep all your logins there because you need to be in control. If you hire somebody, great. Let them do their work. Let them work their magic. Awesome. But I still want you to have the information in your account, your account in your name so that you can access it because I don't want you to be locked out. I don't want you to have this super cool, super awesome uh, website that you can't access and you can't get a hold of whoever worked on it for you. And the business you just built online is sitting there until time runs out and it gets behind on payments because you have to pay for a domain name and then you lose everything. It's not what we're about. We're about building long-term relationships. We're about building a business online that is sustainable. We're not about those quick, quick wins in terms of like quick money overnight. Like if that happens, cool, but we're in it for the long haul, right? We're building sustainable businesses that are going to work for us and that um, are going to make our customers happy and people are going to want to come work with us and hang out with us. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I hope that was helpful and uh, you learned something new and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now and thank you all for uh, joining and watching the replay. I'm going to pop into the after party here in just a minute. That's the comments to hang out with you guys. And if you're watching the replay, definitely um, keep commenting as well, because I'll catch up with you tonight, tomorrow, and the next day. All right, guys. This episode is sponsored by Stupid Easy. Easily create, share, and sell your online courses. Discover more at stupideasy.com. Thank you.